It's a major viral story. A woman shows up to a home she inherited from her parents to find that there are squatters living there. The squatters are unable to prove they live there. So the police tell them, unfortunately, you have to leave. But they warn the homeowner that if she changes the locks on her own home, she will be arrested. Despite the fact these men have no evidence they actually live there because, well, they're squatters. Why did the police try so hard to defend the squatters? The cops knew they were squatters. The cops knew these men had no proof they lived there, which anyone who was actually renting a property would. But they still warned the homeowner. Why? These cops are communists. Police officers have been quitting in mass for the past several years. The departments have been recruiting ideologically captured individuals, and they are acting as though there is a rule set. But like referees that want one team to win, they tell the homeowner, don't you dare use this home as your own. And to those men, look, just get me some proof you've been here. Anything. The man leaves and comes back with some kind of bill. We don't know what it was. The police say, OK, good enough for us, ma'am. You're under arrest. They arrest the homeowner. What comes next? I have long warned about vigilantes show up to evict squatters at Queen's home where owner was arrested as neighbors reveal three people have been living there for free and carrying out work inside the neighbors in this area where the squatters have taken over the home are terrified. They say these people have moved in. They're criminals. They know that they're doing something untoward. They're trying to cover up what they're doing. And many people say, well, you just, just got to go to court. You got to go to court. Vigilantes. Now, I don't know what these guys actually did when the press asked these vigilantes. They said, we're going to talk to them. But I think you all know what comes next. I think about how things used to be. Man, you couldn't get away with this stuff 30, 40 years ago. You could not. Communities were closer. Cops would not cross locals. But now it doesn't matter. The police serve the regime. And it's been that way for some time. You used to have the small town cop who was worried about being shunned by the community. But as the machine grows and it becomes more national and international, the less they care about you because you have no power over them. I think about the Civil War. There were men who were trained at West Point alongside many Union generals, Confederate generals stood. But when the states seceded, they had to make a choice. My home or my country. And they said, Virginia is my home. I can't abandon it. See, these men who were trained military leaders and served with the United States still had to make a choice for their community. The big effort we're seeing right now among the communists is to shatter this community. And it's working to make sure that police have no ties to their neighbors. So when there is something to be enforced at the ideological level, the cops with smiles on their faces will arrest a middle aged woman who owns the home that she inherited because they don't know you. They don't care about you. And there are no consequences. Conservatives gleefully will say back the blue no matter who. Democrats at the same time will say vote blue no matter who. And I say support the individuals that are doing a good job. If I see a police officer do an act of heroism, I will congratulate him. But inherently, what we're seeing now in most major cities, especially after the George Floyd riots four years ago, the police have been replaced with ideological, uh, ideologically captured individuals or just the banality of evil. So I stress this again to you. When the police show up and we watch this video, the police tried their hardest to help the squatters. Why would you do that? Well, I'll tell you what comes next. I don't see any path forward after November, where things would be peaceful. I hope and I pray that Trump wins. Everything remains peaceful. He, be, he brings on a good AG and they start weeding out the corruption that we're seeing here and protecting the American people. But you really think the left will be peaceful? Of course not. Now, in the inverse, should Trump lose? I think this country devolves into tribalist barbarian like conflict. Maybe I shouldn't say barbarian like, but I mean, the left will certainly go around just taking what they want. This will result in more conservative areas shoring up their own defenses, and it'll put them at odds with the regime police forces. Cops 
who would gleefully enforce unconstitutional edict against innocent people. They don't care about the Constitution. It means nothing to them. So vigilantes show up. I don't know to what extent you can actually call them vigilantes, but that's how it's being reported by numerous outlets. I tell you what the next thing that's going to happen is this middle aged woman is trying to sell the property. There are people who live next door to these criminals who are squatting. I fear the next story we're going to hear is that these men are murdered. I don't want any one of these people to die. I don't want anybody to die. I think they should go to jail. I think they should be criminally charged. They're clearly lying about what's going on. But I I think once you cross that threshold and we're now dealing with squatters in New York and it's happening all the time, I'll give you the scenario. The police tried so hard to defend the squatters against the actual property owner. All that need happen is something as simple as this. New York's going to see a wave of this. You book an Airbnb. You pay the bill. You leave. You come back 30 days later. Have a locksmith change the locks. You know, it's really simple. Have a letter sent to the address for you. Uh, get a get a, a, a they, they could uh, take get a new phone plan and put that Airbnb address as their phone plan. Pay for it one night at the Airbnb. The person who owns the Airbnb has no idea that you signed up for a cell phone plan using that address. And then call a locksmith shows up and you say, here's my phone bill. Here's the address. And they go, you got it. They pop open that door. In fact, you might even be able to use that phone bill to get an ID and say, here's my new address. You've not been there at all. Change the locks. And now the apartment is yours. Of course, you'll then have to deal with the actual owner of the property who says, well, what are you doing in my property? And this person need only say, if you do not leave, I will call the police. I'm the rightful tenant of this property. The police will show up. This individual, after being in the building for only 10 minutes, will say, here's my ID. I live here. And the cops say, civil issue. Bye bye. That's how easy it is. And there's nothing anyone can do about it. That's where we're currently at in terms of places like New York, where communists have completely taken over. You you take a look at what they're they're doing to Trump. They've taken over. Now the next set of uh, actions start beginning, especially with the squatting. It is quite remarkable. In fact, the individual could get an ID with a, a, they have a utility bill, like who has phones anymore? I just have a cell phone. I live here. They could even drop a fake lease. What are you going to do about it? What do you do? It's a civil issue. Prove it in court. Maybe they don't get an ID. Maybe that's a bit extreme. But even with a cell phone bill, they can get a locksmith to come out. Better yet, they can call the police and say, here's where I paid rent to be here. Here's my phone bill. I've been here for a month. They changed the locks on me. The police will then help you. This is something I've talked about quite a bit in the past, actually, and it's been this way for some time. It's an idea of whoever calls the police first wins. And it's a tend- it, it tends to be true, but not always. I'll jump to that in a second. What I fear now with these vigilantes is that there's ways to solve problems. There's ways that locals solve problems that I don't think actually solves anything. But in the short term, these squatters in this house, they're going to wake up one day with three men in ski masks standing over them with baseball bats, and they're going to shatter some bone, and then they're going to leave. That's it. The homeowner is going to say, I have no idea what that was all about. In fact, maybe she doesn't even know. Maybe hearing in the news that these squatters are doing this, some of the neighbors just enter the home in the middle of the night. Ten seconds cracking baseball bats on the legs of these men, leaving them with shattered bone, unable to walk ever again. And they leave. They don't call the cops. They don't say nothing. It's the middle of the night. Nobody reports anything. Nobody sees anything. These men who are squatters, what can they do about it? That's where I fear this goes. We do not want to live in a world like that. It's just more violence, more problems. But that's what you get. Already some guys showed up saying, hey, we want to figure out what's going on. I've seen stuff like this. Street justice is what happens when the police don't take action and they won't. Because communists are in charge and communists are ceding control and the police don't care at all. 
These cops, these two cops who came to this woman's house could have said, I don't care who you think you are. We're taking you out of this house. And the man could say, but I live here and be like, nice try and pulled him out. That guy would have no recourse. The squatter would do nothing. He's not going to file any charges. Nothing's going to happen. But the cops don't care. And conservatives don't seem to get this. And I think the reason why is because many of them probably grew up in more rural areas where they had local cops who knew them. But in big cities, it's not right. Doesn't work that way. They have shattered community. And, you know, people like to imagine that all cops are rushing in to the danger zone. I commend those cops. I do legitimately. But what we're witnessing is over the past several years, when in 2020, I was saying, I'm, I'm with the cops, baby. We can't abolish the police. That's insane. I still genuinely think a police force is a good thing. I do. But not when the communists have replaced the police department with other communists. Now you're backing communists wearing blue. That makes no sense. None. So no, you don't back the blue no matter who. You don't, <laughs> Democrats vote blue no matter who. And what happens when the Democrats put their, their blue commies in uniform? You going to defend them as they do this? I don't know how long it's going to take, but sooner or later, you're going to get the mob. It's going to be mafia. You know, the funny thing is, the stories that we used to get is the protection racket. Mafia had come to the business and say, look, if you want to be safe, you pay us. We come by once a week, you pay us. And then it's made to look like they're the bad guys. But the reality is, you see what's going on right now in New York with these, and not even in New York, LA, Chicago where these roving bands go around ransacking stores. What do you think would happen to these gangs that go around ransacking stores if these were mob protected businesses? The mafia still existed and they do in some to some extent, but not really. These young guys who are looting these stores one day wake up to see two men with ski masks standing over their bed and a couple of crowbars and then their kneecaps shatter just like that. And those guys are gone. And nobody knows who did it. And they call the police and say, some men showed up and they attacked me. And they'll be like, sounds like a burglary. Sorry. Good luck. What are we supposed to do about it? People start to get the message. That's not a place we want to live. We want to live in a society where people get along and they don't do these things. But back in the day, if the, if the mob says you pay the bills, we keep you safe. What do you think happens when someone comes in and ransacks that bodega? Bodega owner says, I can't pay you this week. Where, where's my protection? Huh? And the mafia says, we take care of it. They show up to these young men who have been ransacking the stores and they say, why are you taking money from our pocket? See, organized crime is better than than uh, an anarchic crime. Anarcho tyranny is a better way to put it. But we don't want either of it. I just see that's where we're headed. It's kind of wild to think. Squatters being protected more and more and more. Soon it won't matter. I got the sweet. I said, called it. Y'all won't like what comes next. Wall Street Silver says there are consultants that will fix this. The homeowner writes a new rental agreement with the consultant. Then the consultant moves in with the squatters and makes life very uncomfortable for them. If they call the police, the consultant has a valid rental agreement, which the owner confirms. Most of these expert consultants are huge guys and very intimidating. They will have the squatters voluntarily moving moving out without uh, within days. It's a nice thought, but that's not how it's going to play. That ain't going to be how how it's going to play. Look, this is a middle-aged woman, okay? She's got a daughter. Her daughter's got friends. And you take a look at street justice. You take a look at what this means. This young girl's going to say, my mom inherited it. My grandparents died, and they gave us this house, and these guys took it from us. And there's going to be some 21-year-old, 23-year-old dude, and they're going to be 6'3", and they're going to be, I'm not going to call them in shape, but, you know, Thicker guys, but strong guys. And they're going to say, we'll take care of you, honey. Don't you worry about it. And that's when these squatters wake up to find three men standing over them. In fact, they probably just wake up with a pillow over their face as their legs shatter within their flesh from baseball bats cracking down on them. Dude, I'm from the south side of Chicago, man. It's not a place, it's not, it's not a world you want to live in. My, my point with all this is, I fear where this goes. I come from a place where, I mean, we've seen it in Chicago. You've seen it. It's, it's, it's plain as day. It's daily life. I don't know how things are there now. I left, but I can't tell you how many times somebody woke up with a dude in a ski mask pointing a gun at their forehead in Chicago. 
And they said, the next time you make a move against us, we pull the trigger. That's Chicago. That's how it used to be, at least. Crazy stories. Had stories of like a fight breaks out between a dude and his girlfriend. Like, I'm, I'm a teenager. And then within 15 minutes, there's 12 guys outside the house and they all got guns. And then the dude fighting with the girlfriend runs away. He's like, please, please, please. Cops never get involved. Never. If the police are going to defend the squatters, it's only a matter of time before people just say the cops do nothing. But think about this. <clears throat> if the cops ain't arresting anybody, <clears throat> excuse me, if they're not arresting criminals, why would anyone fear the cops? Why would anyone have any concern? That's the breakdown. And that's what I think they want. I think the far left absolutely does want this. They want a world where the police do nothing, can't do anything, are overwhelmed or ideologically aligned with them. And the system breaks. We going back in time, baby. We're going way back in time. I don't know, though. Right? I think the media is reporting this as vigilantes. And I guess technically it's true. I mean, we don't know who these two guys are, but they, these, these two guys very well may have just been uh, family friends. Vigilantes. They may have been family friends just coming to see what's going on. Talk to people who are there. One of the guys wearing a Trump shirt. I wonder if these are just two guys who saw the news and said something's got to be done about this. Not in my town. Look, dude, communists own your city. They're cheating in politics. They're lying about everything. And the police are helping them do it. It's only a matter of time. I mean, it's crazy to, uh, uh, for me. You know, the story, J6, there were several retired and even some active duty police officers who on January 6th were in the front of the building where the riot was happening. And these former and current police officers, I think it was mostly former, said to the Capitol Police, hey, man, this is getting out of control. We're here to help you. Tell us what you need us to do. and We'll, we'll stop this. And some of these officers said, get these guys out of here. And they say, you got it, boss. Dudes wearing Trump shirts and like armor, assisting the police. And then what happens? The Capitol Police hunted them down and charged them and they were arrested. Several individuals who tried to help the police on that day have been criminally charged and went to prison or got, you know, went through that whole system. How can that be? Well, it's, it's really simple. Communists, I don't know if it's if, if communists is even the right word. I think we need a new word for it. Neocoms, they've they've taken over. The Capitol Police, with smiles on their faces, will even arrest other cops. Meanwhile, these more conservative leaning former cops say things like, back to the blue. I don't blame the cops for doing it. I blame the the machine. I bl I blame Joe Biden. I don't. These cops came to this woman's home and defended the squatters. No questions asked. They, they had no interest in protecting the little middle aged woman and her daughter from these two grown men who stole the property with no proof they lived there. They don't give they don't care. Boy, oh, boy. You know, I was watching a Bronx tale. I've talked about this. I don't know if you've seen a, a Bronx tale, but there is this really great scene in the movie. I think I saw it a long time ago as a kid, but passively, I don't really remember it at all. But a scene I've seen and. Uh, this guy, what's the mobster's name? Is it Sonny? I don't know. He, they, he's, he hears a ruckus, loud motorbikes. He walks down the street and goes to the bar where he sees and hears the argument. He walks in and says, hey, 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 what's the problem? The biker guys wearing, you know, denim jackets, vests. The bartender says, these guys are not proper, proper, not wearing proper attire. And we told them we won't serve them. And one of the bikers goes, Look, man, we just want to have a drink. We have a beer and then we'll be on our way. And the mob boss says, spoken like a gentleman, serve these men their drinks. Respect. I know you don't got the right clothes, but you were a nice guy to me. I'm going to get you your beer. Look at that. No pretense. No pretense. Bartender hands these, these men the beers. And the guys immediately then put their thumb over the bottle, shake them up and spray down the bartender and start laughing. Uh oh. My boss was leaving, turns around. And he says, OK, now you guys got to leave. 
And that's when that biker guy says, what the are you going to do about it? F off. So the mob boss turns around, walks to the door of the bar, closes it and locks it. Walks back over and all of a sudden all the bikers realize what just happened. He says, now you can't leave. I love the narration at that point. The main character then says at that point they knew they effed up. Backdoor pops open and a bunch of good old boys come out with crowbars and baseball bats and guns and beat the living crap out of these bikers. I love the story. I do. I don't like the violence. I don't want to see that in my neighborhood. None of that. They drag these guys out, mercilessly beat them, and then smash up their motorbikes. From zero to 11. Like that. But I love the story. I love the story because the mob boss had honor. The honor was this. You don't dress the way you're supposed to dress. The sign says you got to be dressed properly. But these guys asked politely. We just want to have a drink. And the mob boss gave them the respect they asked for. We didn't have to do it. And then they disrespected him, accosting the bartender. And after that, he only said, you got to leave. He said, I come to you with respect. You respect me. I respect you. Have a beer. They sprayed down the bartender. That's not just disrespect. That's an attack on a person. Not the worst, but that's that's accosting somebody. And even then, he kept it at level one saying, guys, now you got to leave. And these guys said, nah, not only were they saying we will attack you, we will disrespect you and we will take your space from you. And he said, now you can't leave. I love the story. I want to live in a world, not with the violence, not with the beatdowns or anything like that, but the respect. If I want to walk into a steakhouse and I want to wear an unbuttoned shirt, jeans and a beanie. And my money is as green as anybody else's. Ain't nobody should tell me I can't spend that money. Now, if you're a private establishment, you want to have a dress code. Fine. That's your establishment. A couple weeks ago, a couple, a couple months ago, I think it was. We went to uh, we scheduled a dinner. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's at this uh, place. It's got, they got skiing and they got a nice restaurant. And so we go snowboarding, skiing, snowboarding. And so we're wearing uh, snow pants. For snowboarding. The restaurant's right indoors after you go snowboarding. Well, they tell us you're not dressed properly. You can't come in. And I said, this is a skiing establishment. We are wearing our clothing from having gone snowboarding. We, no one's wearing anything bad. We're wearing uh, waterproof pants and we're wearing long sleeve shirts. And they said, no, button up shirts and nice pants only. I, I said, we scheduled this. And if you had told me in advance, we could not go snowboarding, skiing, and then come for dinner without bringing proper attire, I would never have booked this. Now, where are we supposed to go for dinner? They told us too bad. See, that's disrespect. Okay. I can respect it's a private establishment. So when my friends were like, no, 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 this is BS. Like, how could you, what? I said, no, no, no. That's fine. Went to the manager and I explained very calmly. I said, look, if you had told us in advance, you post on your website. You go skiing here. You cannot have dinner here unless you change your clothes. We would have bought a change of clothes. I just figured after we're done, we go and sit down and have dinner. He said, I'll take care of you. He got us a seat at a very nice. They have other restaurants. He says, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make room because everything was booked up. He said, no, no we're going to make room for you. That's respect. I respect that. It's their private establishment. They're allowed. That's the place I like to live. And this is not an expensive place we went. But the place that's being built right now is that barbarism. These guys who take this house and squat in it think, I'll just take whatever I can and I will whip it from the hands of this woman. The inheritance of her dead parents. I'll take it. The barbarians are at the gates and ain't nobody is here to protect you. The cops certainly ain't going to do it. The cops are there to protect the barbarians. So what do you do? I don't got answers for you, my friends. I can only tell you, get out of New York. The, the state is seizing, trying to, is, is planning to seize Trump's properties. They're using the law against them. Your property rights are forfeit in New York. And now we got, we got our coffee distributor in New York State. Not New York City, but New York State. We're going to have to start making plan B for this. Things are getting crazy, my friends, and you don't want to know where this goes next. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel.
Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.